Hello my friends, it's Trish from Pink Boodle Jewelry Studio back here with another project with Dress It Up Buttons and Jesse James Beads. We're going to make some fun wine charms using these round Christmas buttons and this Christmas Eve mix. And we're also going to be using this super, super fun Micro Shapes Christmas mix. I really like these. They have a lot of fun shapes in it. And I'm going to use some 80 seed beads. These are Toho's, which you can get on Jesse James beads. And I'm going to be using some memory wire as well, a chain nose plier. And we're going to also be using two memory wire specific tools. This is the round nose plier made for memory wire and a memory wire cutter. And you're going to need this because memory wire is stainless steel and you will ruin your other cutters if you use those instead of memory wire cutters. Here's our memory wire and I'm just showing you here that it has a spring to it. And we're going to cut a piece and we're going to leave about an inch between where we want to cut it to the end of the piece of memory wire. And I'll pull it out here and you can see that. And that's going to give you your spring when we hook them together. That'll give you more of a spring when you open and close. Now keep in mind guys, you can also use like a 20 gauge or an 18 gauge wire. It won't give you the spring, but it'll work just as well. And here I'm taking those memory wire round nose and I'm just placing it on the tip end of the wire and I'm rolling that back to make a loop and I'm adjusting my pliers as I'm rolling back and you can see I'm doing it numerous times here I'm just adjusting rolling back and that gives us our loop that'll be great for closing up the wine charm napkin ring whatever you choose to use this for and I laid out my design here with my tiny buttons and I know between every button I want to put a seed bead just because to me that really features the buttons and they really look great like that. So I'm just showing you here. You're going to slide your buttons onto your memory wire and it doesn't matter what hole you use in them. It'll all even out and it looks great no matter what. And I'm just putting the 80 seed beads on and another button. And this is kind of simple stringing, guys, and it's really easy and fun for anybody to do. It just kind of keeps it, you know, low-key and lets everyone kind of join the party. So I'm just placing more seed beads on there. And these buttons here, guys, they are just so super fun to work with. They really add a lot of color and dimension to your pieces without overwhelming say the focal button that you want to use there is the round ones there which work with anything i'm going to do two with round buttons and two with the micro shapes which the micro shapes are super fun too because you know they just really amp up a piece by being so interesting you know the buttons are super interesting because of all the different shapes and christmas eve the christmas eve mix guys if, I mean, you can get your hands on it, do it. It just has such really cute pieces with it. So you can see here I'm showing you that the shank is up and down for these. And that is because they will sit better when the shank's up and down. But don't get discouraged if you have a horizontal shank on your button. You can just snip it off and put a bail on it and hook it right onto the wire. It's simple as that. And here I'm showing you, we're going to put two seed beads on before we put on our focal button that we're using. And that is because that will make your button stand out a little bit more, your bigger button. And it'll keep it from moving strangely on your wire. Those two seed beads on each side just kind of secure it. And here I'm doing the other two seed beads on the other side. And another note, guys, I am doing a symmetrical pattern here on both sides with my buttons and my seed beads on, other, on either side of the focal button. You don't have to do that. You can pick your buttons more randomly. You don't have to lay out a pattern. But, you know, this is what I wanted to do. I kind of wanted things to be pretty uniform. And while I'm finishing this part up, guys, I do want to talk briefly a little bit more about the memory wire cutters and the pliers. 
Now, memory wire cutters are not absolutely necessary if you have an old pair of pliers that you don't mind if it gets nicked up and, you know, ruined in my opinion, but it it really helps to cut the stainless steel to have these pliers. But if you don't want to make the investment, ask your husband to give you an old pair of heavy duty pli um, pliers and cutters from his, maybe his stash in the garage or whatever. And that would work just as well. I just have a lot of jewelry making pliers and I want to make sure that they stay in prime condition. And that's why I've purchased the memory wire cutter. Now, the round nose memory wire pliers, you can see they're short and stout. And the reason is, is because the longer nose pliers will sometimes bend when you're using, uh, you know, the regular pliers on the memory wire and they'll ruin your pliers. Here I'm taking my chain nose pliers and I'm showing you I don't have anything coming through on that other side. And we're going to make our hook here that's going to hook into the loop. And I'm just bending that back and you can see it's not straight up, directly straight up. You want it to have an angle so it hooks in that loop well and stays closed. But you can see with having that little bit of inch between there that we did when we first cut it, it gives it a nice spring. It's going to keep it closed. And there it is with some great colors and a little reindeer, just the cutest little thing. Happy, very happy with that. So we're going to start here. I'm going to show you another one. We're going to show you one more here just to kind of make sure that you have the process down. And I'm going to show you here what we're going to do. We're going to take, again, those round nose memory wire pliers. And we want to go down by the base when we're doing this too, guys, or it will actually bend these pliers as well. But I'm spinning that rolling my wrist and making a loop, adjusting my pliers slowly but surely to make that loop. And just make sure you have a good grip on it when you're turning it and leave up, grab it again and turn again. And I was just adjusting that loop there with my chain nose pliers and it just makes it so it's nice and closed. I don't want it to have an opening so my hook will slip out of it whenever it's sitting on someone's glass. And I did the same thing, guys. I laid out a pattern. These are using the micro shapes. And I'm loving how that's coming out. It has a variety of shapes in it, like triangles and squares, hearts, and there's some stars and flowers in there. Just really adorable. But we're doing the same process. We're just bead and micro button, bead and micro button. I love the impact it makes. Those little micro buttons just add so much cheer to the rings. Super cute. And here you can see I'm putting my wire through the button. And you can see guys, I'm holding that wire between my thumb and my pointy finger, the end of it, because I like to have control when I'm trying to put my wire through the holes and the buttons. If you hold it too far back, sometimes it makes it a little more difficult to get everything to go through for you. So that's just a little tip, just to hold closer to the end between two of your fingers. And it makes the process go a little faster. So here I have one side of my button as the sea beads done, and I'm going to put on this cute green package with red bow. That's gonna be our center button on this one. And then the two C beads on the other side for that security. And see how it sits behind it, guys? It really makes it nice to kind of keep things steady there. And here I'm just going to add my last few buttons and my last few seed beads to finish this ring up. And that looks like that's our last button there. And now I'm just going to kind of take a look at it and make sure everything's the way I wanted it. And I am happy with that. Everything's lining up and matching nicely. And I'm just going to take the chain nose pliers again, guys, right on the end of the wire and do a quick bend to bend that back to hook into our loop like we did with our first one. 
And that is all set. I'm going to lay it down here so you can get a look at it. I'm pretty happy with that. It just adds so much using those tiny beads and those seed beads just set them off. I just love it. So guys, that is it for this video. Here are all four finished for you. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I really had a good time making it. And thanks so much for stopping by and spending this time with me today, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.